All right, and welcome to lesson five on an introduction to Kubernetes. In this lesson, we are going to build a local Kubernetes cluster on your machine so that you can follow along. Okay, so to follow along with this series, we are going to do a lot of experimenting, and I think it's really important to get a local Kubernetes cluster so that you can play around with it. While I will try to provide as many labs and challenges online in your browser as I can, I think it's really important that you have a playground that is local that you can get accustomed to and actually extend upon the things that we talk about in these lessons. And you can try all the different things that we talk about. Unfortunately, there are a lot of different ways and depending on your system, there might be a better way to go. So that being said, I'm going to spend a little time talking about the different ones that you can use and then going to describe my favorite one for Linux for a quick and easy cluster. One of them that you can use is Docker. Docker Desktop will enable you to run a local Kubernetes cluster on both Windows and Mac directly from the Docker UI. And if you are on those platforms, it is an excellent way to get a local Kubernetes cluster up and running quickly and easily. If you are on Linux, there are some other tools that provide an even better solution as you can have multiple clusters and tear up and stay and up new clusters even faster and easier. These tools are just fantastic. They can also be used inside of Windows WSL, but requires a little extra work if you're going to go down that path. Uh, on Windows, I really do suggest Docker Desktop, and you can even use that in your WSL. Before you install a local cluster uh, for, uh, with development tools, first we are going to need kubectl, uh, the main tool used to interact with the Kubernetes API. To do that, you can follow the instructions found at this link you not only get an up-to-date list on how to install kubectl, but it also has quick start guides for both kind and minikube all in one place. Most Linux package managers package kubectl and then in the case, it's just as easy installing kubectl through it. Quick note here, whenever you install kubectl, try and make sure it's within one minor version of the Kubernetes deployment you're going to use. I mean, it's actually best practice if it's the exact same version as your Kubernetes instance, but one minor version difference should be just fine. So if you have Kubernetes 120, versions 119, 120, and 121 of kubectl should work just fine, and this is in their version SKU policy. My three favorite Kubernetes, local Kubernetes clustering technologies are Minikube, Kind, and Microcates. So I'm going to drop links to each one of these different technologies down below to their install pages to give you a, some links and instructions to follow that should be kept more up to date than this video as I probably only plan on re-recording this video when the information is really out of date. Uh, but that being said, uh, this video might uh, be there for a year. And so the links will provide you the most up to date versions of how to install any one of these tools. All three of these tools, you just can't go wrong with. They all work really well, provide you easy to access Kubernetes cluster, are simple to install and simple to be used. That being said, if you are on a Ubuntu based machine or already have Snap installed, Microcates is by far the easiest to install as it's just sudo snap install Microcates dash dash classic. And you now have a cluster only a couple minutes later. Now, this is easy and it's very powerful. There are a few times I definitely use and recommend it, but for this class, it's actually not my first recommendation as it does not let for much experimenting and does not let you have multiple clusters on the same p PC at the same time. Uh, it's more of a home Kubernetes cluster running and less of an inspiration experimenting cluster. Minikube and Kind are kind of a toss up. Minikube is more powerful and lets you mess with more of the internals of Kubernetes, but Kind is faster and easier. I find that I use Kind probably about 75% of the time and just fall back on Minikube when Kind is not doing what I want or I want to do, I want a little bit more control of how I run Kubernetes, or I'm trying to do something interesting with the Kubernetes control plane. Because of this, I thought I would show you how to install and get your first cluster running with Kind. That being said, you should be able to follow along with any of the above solutions uh, for the rest of this class, 
any one of them will be fine. You could even make a cluster in a cloud provider and that would work just fine for this class. Let's install Kind and create a cluster with it. Don't worry, it takes about three minutes total to not only install Kind, but also stand up a local Kubernetes cluster. First, you're going to have to install Go. Go is fairly easy to install on Linux. All you really need to do is check if your package manager has the version of Go you want and use your package manager to install it. Uh, if you don't, you can install the Go binary. Next, you need to make sure that you have at least Go 11 and you can then run this command. This command can be updated with the latest version of Kind as they release new versions all the time. I'm sure that this will be outdated and you can get the latest version of Kind and that should be the best. One thing I love about Kind is it makes creating a cluster just three words. Kind create cluster is all you need. And it will even update your cube config, something we'll learn more about later, with the ability to access and use this cluster via the kubectl command line. This is fantastic. To check that your cluster is up and running, you can run the kubectl git nodes, and you should see a single node with a status of ready. Please be aware it can take a few minutes the very first time you start up the cluster for the nodes to become ready. And there we have it. You have your own Kubernetes cluster running on your local machine with access through kubectl to access it and deploy all of the pods that we can think of. I hope that you're as excited as I am as we've taken the very first step in leveling up your Kubernetes game. If you want to learn more about kubectl, please join me in the next video as we cover how to use kubectl, some of the most important commands that you're going to use on kubectl kubectl and give you a nice introduction into it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe as uh, and support the channel as a whole, as it would mean a lot to me to get your support to make more of these lessons. See you in the next lesson.